happen on Mount Sinai is absolutely insane. Confío en Buda. Creo en Dios. Creo en Jesucristo. Creo en Dios. Allah. Muchos piensan distinto, sienten distinto, buscan a Dios o encuentran a Dios de diversa manera. En esta multitud, en este abanico de religiones, hay una sola certeza que tenemos para todos. Religious leaders are gathering November 6th through the 18th for a ceremony they're calling Returning to Sinai, where they say that they're going to issue a new Ten Commandments to repent for man-made climate change. The website Interface Center for Sustainable Development has an article discussing the upcoming event titled In Sinai, a Prophetic Call for Climate Justice and Ceremony of Repentance. Mount Sinai is of course where Moses received the Ten Commandments, but these religious leaders are actually calling for a new universal Ten Commandments. Todos somos hijos de Dios. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Creo en el amor. Que el diálogo sincero entre hombres y mujeres de diversas religiones conlleve frutos de paz y justicia. The final stage is being set in November 2022 and it will ultimately lead to the one world religion. This year the Holy Father's message implores the world, listen to the voice of creation and hear its bittersweet song, sweetly praising the Creator, bitterly lamenting our mistreatment of nature. Very worried about this mis mistreatment, the Holy Father calls for bolder action from all nations during this year's COP27 and COP15 summits on climate change and biodiversity. Regarding COP27, Pope Francis again joins scientists in holding to the Paris Agreement's temperature increase goal of 1.5 degrees. The planet already is 1.2 degrees hotter. During this season of creation, may all Christians come together to celebrate the creation's sweet song and respond to creation's bitter cry. Are you kind of getting tired of the greening of evangelicalism? The latest new evangelical agenda sucking at time, energy and money is the effort to save the planet from destruction by people. Climate change has become a new religion that unites secular activists and spiritual leaders from different faiths. I am the Archbishop of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of Finland. Celebrates the so-called Ecumenical Responsibility Week. The purpose of this week is to make people reflect, question and evaluate their own lifestyle in relation to the state of the world. My mission is make sure to make sure that our global government understands that climate knows no national borders. Climate, mother nature, whatever you want to say, doesn't understand financial mechanisms and climate doesn't understand uh, intention to lower emissions, to clean up our act. Climate wants us to do what needs to be done if we as humans want to continue to live on this planet in a way that is comfortable. I have to comment on this because we live in a world and we live in a time where the radical environmental movement, the green wing nuts, the tree huggers as we call them where I come from, have created this false dichotomy. And we speak about human beings as though there is nature and then there is humans. And humans are an infringement upon nature. Nothing could be further from the truth. We are a part of nature. It is not nature or us. We are a part of nature. Not only are we a part of nature, we are the crowning glory of God's creation and all of nature was made for us. Do not fall for this. Young people, I know you're hearing it everywhere you go. Do not fall for this. Nature belongs to us, not the other way around. This is why our stewardship of it is so important. Listen, nature is more productive because of us, not less. Because every time there appears a rainbow, this is the promise of God that he will never again destroy the earth by water. Relax. Between November 6th and 18th, 2022, the United Nations Climate Conference, COP27, will take place on the Sinai Peninsula in Sharm el-Sheikh, Egypt.
Notable U.S. politicians and activists, including Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi, are attending this summit to promote their new religion and new God, popularly known as climate change. We see our mission to avert climate catastrophe and seize a new clean energy economy, not only as an imperative for our present and future, but through the eyes of history. According to the World, the World Meteorological Organization, the past eight years have been the warmest on record. Climate crisis is about human security, economic security, environmental security, national security, and the very life of the planet. If you believe as I that this is God's creation and we have a moral responsibility to be good stewards of it, then we agree. And even if you don't share that religious view, we all know we have a moral responsibility to our children. It's always been about survival of the planet, survival of the vulnerable countries and the rest. We want more than survival. We want more than success. Mind you, the uh, United Nations Agenda 21, it used to be called, told us way back when that the plan was to redistribute the West's wealth throughout the third world. Climate change, folks, is the excuse. It's all about redistribution of wealth along classic Marxist globalist lines. Mm -hmm. The world religious leaders will convene at Mount Sinai as part of the events planned for the Climate Change Summit. With each passing day, we see world religious leaders taking bold steps to establish a one-world religion, with the Pope as the supreme or spiritual leader. The Elijah Interfaith Institute and the Interfaith Center for Sustainable Development are two religious groups promoting the climate change Ten Commandments. Their website states, Mount Sinai is a mountain whose memory and meaning loom large as a place of revelation in the collective consciousness of Christianity, Judaism, Islam, and others. As an ancient sacred space, it was the site of prophetic experience and receiving God's message for the prophets Moses and Elijah in all three Abrahamic traditions and the prophet Muhammad in the Muslim tradition. COP27 taking place in Sinai can remind humanity of our sacred responsibility to care for God's creation. Is this a coincidence that the same mountain where God delivered the Ten Commandments to Moses is the exact location the Pope and other religious leaders have chosen to gather to replace God's moral law with humanistic climate change Ten Commandments? we couldn't make this up. Listen carefully to what they say. We return to Sinai in a movement of repentance and quest. We seek a new vision for humanity and its endangered existence, and we seek to receive and amplify a message of life-sustaining living and habits that humanity needs to hear today. In this spirit, the project partners will bring together premier religious leaders from the world's major religions to gather upon Mount Sinai to engage in a first-ever climate repentance ceremony and to put forth a prophetic interreligious call to action. Climate Justice, Ten Universal Commandments. What exactly is contained in the Climate Change Ten Commandments? According to this article by Newsweek, the Interfaith Center for Sustainable Development and the Elijah Interfaith Institute, the two groups championing the Return to Sinai Summit, have drafted a version of the Ten Commandments. First one, acknowledge a higher power. They tell us we need to acknowledge that we are partners with and subservient to the Creator. And number two, they say we need to vote climate. We need to hold governments and corporations accountable for desecrating our common home with each new drilling license and pipeline. Number three, do not murder. The business as usual approach of most leaders make th makes them accessories to murder. Number four, do not steal. We are told that climate change is robbing our future. Number five, do not bear false witness. We are told politicians are not telling the truth about the real and immediate dangers of climate change. Uh, number six, keep the Sabbath. What? Yeah. They say a global weekly non-carbon day of rest could reduce emissions of the world by a seventh. I mean, number seven, you shall innovate. They tell us that technology can accelerate decarbonization and that collaboration can accelerate the implementation. Number eight, we're told that we need to honor Mother Earth. They say climate change is a form of arson against the very home that nurtures our lives and that of all living creatures. And number nine, you need not covet. We are told we have enough and we have the science and technology that we need to build a world in which all people can have enough. Number 10, we're told uh, that we do not need to continue to be hoodwinked. 
The fossil fuel companies and government leaders favor fossil fuels for energy, industry, and transportation, regardless of individual action. How can a Christian ever participate in anything that is a clear affront to God and attempts to substitute God's moral laws with human laws? This year, the Finnish Ecumenical Council decided to show its support for the United Nations target program Agenda 2030. To achieve the goal, buildings must be made energy efficient and carbon neutral. Forests must be protected and managed so that they act as carbon sinks and are diverse. In addition, we should favor a vegetarian diet. Listen to this rabbi who spoke at the United Nations Sustainable Development Conference as he tries to make climate change a spiritual issue and blames preachers for not preaching about it. This is as blatant as it gets. Now, one of the challenges that we're facing is that the ecological crisis is also a crisis of religion because most clergy in the world, unfortunately, rarely preach or teach about the ecological crisis. It's an, it's an interfaith collaboration, it's across religions. And so one of the challenges is how do we rewire religion so that seminaries train clergy to teach and preach on this topic? How do current clergy, the millions of current clergy in the world who have gone through a theological education program without focusing on religion and ecology, how do they have professional development so that they can preach and teach on this on a frequent basis? Well, don't be shocked if your pastor starts preaching about climate change from the pulpit soon because, sooner or later, seminary schools will be forced to include climate change in their curriculums. We now have evangelical environmental networks. We have a Creation Care magazine signed by several hundred evangelical leaders. You might have seen it. College presidents, seminary presidents, pastors, teachers. They issued a call to care for the planet, to heal the damaged fabric of the creation, to work for the healing of the earth. Now the focus goes from that rather grandiose thing, and I've seen some of their yards and they're not even doing it in their own neighborhood, but anyway, that's another one. <laughs> Have you seen the new Green Bible? Yes, everything in the text of Scripture that relates to the environment is printed in green and the cover is made out of biodegradable something or other. I just got a, a recent edition of the Biola College magazine, The Greening of Biola. German churches have repented for green sins in an effort for Christians to stamp out the size of their carbon footprint. Listen to what it says in the Evangelical Declaration on the Care of Creation. Here are the affirmations. We have sinned in our stewardship of creation. Therefore we repent of the way we have polluted, distorted, and destroyed the Creator's work. We commit ourselves to extend Christ's healing to the creation. Another confession, we confess the sins of land degradation, deforestation, species extinction, water degradation, global toxification, alteration of the atmosphere, population growth. Another one, human poverty is a consequence of an environmental degradation. To be clear, we believe everyone should care for God's creation. But these religious leaders are attempting to make God irrelevant and establish another God on earth, the Vicar of Christ or Antichrist. Some of these so-called climate change activists are nature worshippers, and the Bible warned against this in Romans 1 verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever? Amen. Many Catholic institutions are already divesting from fossil fuel corporations and striving towards a net zero climate impact. Regarding biodiversity, the second COP, the Holy Father highlights the need for a new UN agreement to halt the destruction of ecosystems and the extinction of species. At least half of the Earth's of the earth and oceans need to become protected areas by 2030. Folks, this is an interesting time to be alive. If you are a student of the Bible prophecy, you know the Bible foretold about the great apostasy shortly before the second coming of Jesus Christ. If you are not well versed in the Bible prophecy, seeing the great falling away and global events unveiling before us might easily lead you to feel depressed and discouraged. Don't lose hope. Jesus is coming soon.